What's up, guys? Iceman here. So Blizzard gave us some news for Diablo 4, introducing some shit. Here's artwork of these new enemies that are going to be implemented into the game. I don't know how they're going to be implemented into it, if they can just break out wherever the hell you are, or whatever, or maybe you have to go to a certain spots to fight them. But nonetheless, they're called the Cannibals. And apparently they don't have any ranged attackers. So it's supposed to really test your character to where you don't have much time to strategize when they attack you. But I don't know, they have quite a variety of them here, but this is just a piece of art portraying them. And then if you go to blizzard.com, you'll see that they have some announcements, some in regards to the console gameplay and controllers, couch potato co-op and shit like that. And how the game is being designed simultaneously for the console and PC. So the control schemes and all that shit are, you know, being factored in. And of course, they have some new artwork here, as you can see. In fact, this stuff looks okay, right? It looks pretty cool, but it's a lot like Diablo 3, which none of us are probably going to like. But hopefully the game isn't going to be anything like Diablo 3. But yeah, I mean, the, the style's pretty interesting. And it even seems that they have, well, they have normal items. Here's the magic item with a slight blue background. Here's a rare item with a yellow, a set item with a green, and a unique or legendary, or whatever the hell they're going to call them. But yeah, it's it seems to be quite stylistic, wouldn't you say? The art looks pretty cool, right? Now, here's a big thing that they've also announced. And I know some people have been bitching about this, myself included. How I thought it'd be kind of fun to have the Tetris-style inventory where your items take up different amounts of space. Just like in Diablo 2, where you have your armor, your body armor, that takes up six spaces. You know, then you have your weapon that takes up three like that. or It, it all varies depending on the weapon type. Your helm takes up four. And some even larger items like your Merc stuff, it takes up... What is that? Uh, eight slots total. And of course, you had to play Tetris with your inventory and shit. But at least things were easy to identify. I think that's kind of why I liked it. I like knew that I had a big scythe in my stash. So I'd run to the stash, open it up, and I instantly know where it is. You know, whereas now they're all going to take up one little spot. Just like how it was in Diablo 3. But I know a lot of action RPGs are going in this way. So... It probably can't be avoided, you know, for a lot of these companies who try to replicate the uh, action adventure RPG game type, hack and slash, isometric view game type. It seems like they're all going with a little one slot per item. Now, it's not a lot to bitch about, but it's a little bit to bitch about. You know, I, I think I do like the Texas thing, or the uh, the Tetris thing, but... Let me know, do you guys like the Tetris Texas thing, or do you like the one slot per item type? No matter what the item type is, it all just takes up one fucking slot. Let me know in the comments below uh, which, which method you prefer, alright? But that's the route that they're going, it seems. And they're also going to do something where you can uh, rebind your left click to whatever probably whatever button you, you choose to on your keyboard, I would guess. Because apparently people sometimes bitch about that, how uh, you'll accidentally cast your action button or your uh, your attack or whatever when you're actually just meaning to travel. You know what I mean? So apparently that's not going to be a thing anymore, where, you know, if it comes down to it, you can choose. You can have your left click oriented entirely for movement. Here's some new pictures and stuff of the uh, the sorcerer or sorceress. But yeah, game's going to be... It's looking okay so far, right? I mean, we really don't know shit about it. Uh, a lot of people are saying they're copying Path of Exile. And I think that's a great thing. You know what I mean? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Path of Exile did a lot of toad things. You know, it's a toad fucking game. But it's, it's, it's extremely in-depth. And, and, and that's cool. 
But, you know, Diablo, of course, has the Diablo theme. It has the Tristram music and shit. It has the heaven and hell stuff. You know what I mean? So it's just it, it just has the environment, you know, that a lot of us want to play in. So, yeah, I'm really wanting this game to be absolute toad. And maybe it will be. We just we just have no idea. Some more artwork. But yeah, in terms of them copying Path of Exile, I think that's... Path of Exile did a lot of things right. And of course, this is Path of Diablo. It's a Diablo 2 mod that has implemented mechanics that Path of Exile has. The game's told. Uh, it gives you a larger inventory, and you can find little orbs of corruption where you can slam your items. So it's it's it's... Even more in-depth customization and itemization because of these orbs of corruption, and I, and I believe they were inspired by items in Path of Exile. All right, and this is the best way to play Diablo 2, dog. I mean, I haven't tried every way, but I'm just pretty damn sure of it. This is the most told way to play Diablo 2. All right, when you slam an item, you can get like more than uh, one socket. You know, you can get whatever the item type max sockets can be. You can get that in whatever the fuck you slam. Like right here, I have a Natalia's Mark, and it has three sockets. And in regular Diablo 2, you could never do this. You could just use the Larzuk quest and get one socket, or maybe even an expensive cube recipe and get one socket, if that even exists, although I think that's an SOJ. But nonetheless, you know, you get three sockets on this shit. But of course, the problem is, or the, the risk involved is, there's a 25% chance the item will get destroyed, or turned into a rare, rather. So, you know, it's, it's just more risk in the gameplay. And do you want to slam this thing and risk making it go bye-bye? But the plus side is you're going to have some epic attributes added to it. And there's more than just sockets. It's, it's just an example. But my point is, some shit in Path of Diablo has been in, uh, inspired by Path of Exile, hence the name. So hopefully, Blizzard will take totish things that Path of Exile does right and maybe expand on that shit. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think of these new announcements so far um, in terms of the inventory. Do you guys like that? Or do you prefer the old school Tetris style inventory? Let me know in the comments below. And this whole cannibal shit. Do you like that? Or do you not like that shit? Let me know in the comments below. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens with this game, right? I ain't gonna... I don't. I ain't trust nothing until it's in this sack, if you know what I mean. So I ain't going to trust this shit until I play it, and then I'm going to establish whether or not it's told. One of the major things Diablo 3 fucked up is how there's there's no freaking ceiling. In Diablo 2, there's a ceiling. Now, this can be a good and bad thing, of course, but what I'm meaning is there's a benchmark, man. Like, you know that the end game, like, say, Path of Diablo, for example, there's these maps you can open up, and they're level 85-plus areas. But they have a cap. Maybe the cap is level 90. I don't know. It's something like that. And the shit's difficult, but once you optimize your character, you can start to, to destroy everything in it and become, like, godlike. All right? And then you know, okay, that's the benchmark. That's as hard as shit gets. So now, knowing this, I can build characters and screw around with builds that I like with my play style that I think can still run this endgame content uh, rather efficiently. Unlike the Diablo 3, where you just have the endless rifts, the fucking bottomless rifts, where your character just continues to uh, be challenged to crazy extents, and there's no benchmark, you know? It's, 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 it's infinite, right? Isn't that shit infinite? Hypothetically? Like, you can just make a rift 300, and uh, or you probably can't. Nobody has gone that far, but you can make, like, a rift... 150 and if your character face rolls that you can just make rift 151 until it's just too fucking difficult you know but of course the drops are heightened but again we don't have to go around and about with all this shit constantly but everybody knows we don't want legendaries to be falling from the sky and in addition to that we don't want the end game builds to be centered around sets where you just got to match the fucking colors and you're playing the end game build and any baby could do that you know, Diablo 3 was made for babies and toddlers. So hopefully, uh, Diablo 4 will be made for big boys. You know, there's a lot of big boys who want to play this shit. So hopefully they'll make it for the big boys.
That's kind of what I'm hoping for. But let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. All right, and like this video, if you will. Look at that shit. That's a classic item right there, man. That's a collector's item. I'm going to keep that shit. But become a patron if you want. Uh, link in the description below. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me as you have. And if you want to become a patron, click the link in the description below. And let me know your thoughts on these matters regarding Diablo 4 so far. Peace be with you.